Before I start, I want to apologize in advance if this video is a little bit lackluster. I'm currently feeling rather unwell and slowly taking steps to making more videos, right? It's in the process, but I'm feeling a little bit better today. I needed to cut my break short because this one shot by Tatsuki Fujimoto was phenomenal. Absolutely incredible. And it's definitely very confusing. It has a lot of people somewhat all over the place trying to interpret the story, trying to understand it, and truly get into the mindset of what Fujimoto was trying to portray. It's very introspective, it's very personal, it's very intimate, it's beautifully conceptualized, and it's a great reading experience. It's odd, it feels different, but it feels like Fujimoto. Undoubtedly, this is his style of storytelling. I think the manga phrases it as a bit of surreal sprinkled with fantasy. Serious elements or components mashed with this chaoticness. Sound familiar? Originally, I thought I would try to explain this from start to finish, but I don't actually think that's a good idea. I think this work is very interpretive, it's very personal, and it completely relies on your own perspective and interpretation of the events within the manga. There's no true right or wrong answer, but it's how you view the things that's going on. It's how you comprehend it and understand it and unravel it to your own heart's desires, just like any story, really. Goodbye Eri is obviously a little bit more on the nose, a little bit more obnoxious, a little bit more extrapolated in a lot of different avenues, but with purpose, with care, with finesse, it's very meta in a lot of different ways, but not too obnoxious. More so just in the confusing sense, which is perfectly fine, because confusing and Fujimoto are usually within the same sentence, alongside chaotic. There is a multitude of ways of how I interpreted Goodbye Eri, and after sitting on it for a little bit of time, just kind of pondering over it, thinking about it, I came to the conclusion that not only is this an introspective work for Fujimoto himself, very similar to Look Back, telling his past, his experience with the creative outlet and how that's been remembered through his legacy. From his early one-shots to Fire Punch to Chainsaw Man to Look Back to Now Goodbye Eri, but also how people remember the difficulties of creating a style that was very unorthodox, that wasn't necessarily accepted. When I look at Goodbye Eri and the quote-unquote sprinkle of fantasy that was so ridiculed, that was so hated within the story, that was so despised, this instantly piqued my interest towards Fire Punch, because I believe this had the exact same reception. A story that was so surreal, that handled beautiful emotions and depth and the misery behind a lot of characters, but then it was splashed and tied together with so much fantasy and extravagance that just, for a lot of people, diluted the whole thing, that made it feel redundant or not as spectacular as they originally thought. Now, it's perfectly fine if you think this. Once again, it comes down to perspective and your opinion, but I think this left a rather massive impact on Fujimoto's career, how he started to make manga, how he gained a name for himself originally, and similar to the reception of characters watching a movie that broke itself apart with these very fantasy elements right at the end, it was almost identical to Fire Punch's reception. But through Goodbye Eri, the main character realizes that this is him. This is his style of story. This is what he's great at. And how he portrays people and things in different lights is how they are going to be remembered, even with that fantasy. And there's a couple of ways the one shot does this, right? First and foremost, the whole thing is a movie from start to finish. It's not just him making a movie about his mother or about Eri, quite literally the whole thing. It is a movie about a boy creating two other movies for people he cares about, to find what he's passionate about, and how he wants to tell his stories. And the first, I guess, most alarming thing you'll notice from this, and where this whole theme of legacy and being remembered a very specific way, comes in form of his mother. His mother was portrayed to be very beautiful and kind and loving and caring, but you find out she wasn't that. She was mean, she was abusive, she was hostile towards her son, towards her family, and she even dictated the entire movie creation process of her son. Yet when people watched the movie, they felt bad for the main character's mother. They felt bad for what she experienced and what she went through. The way they remembered her was in a loving light, which was obviously very far from the truth so it plays with your perspective. The next movie that gets created is obviously about Eri, and there's a lot of trial and tribulation there, creating something that is unique and refreshing, and this is where going back to the roots, going back to the pinch of fantasy that Fujimoto himself likes to add within his stories and clashing these very real topics and emotions with fantastical elements comes into play. Eri didn't accept anything. 
shouldn't accept any improvement or evolution or growth in any other direction than what the main character was actually wanting to do. It felt unnatural, it felt misplaced, it felt fickle. So instead, Eri directed the main character to go back to what he was good at, to go back to the story that he wants to tell, and when he finally told it, it ended the exact same way. Once again, surreal, very similar to his mother, showcasing Eri in a, a very beautiful light and finding out that she wasn't necessarily the nicest person, that she was potentially a little bit of a bully, maybe a little bit weird, maybe something else, but to the main character, nice, respectful, understanding, and they grew closer and closer, and she too fell ill and got sick and passed away, but imposed this fantastical idea that she was a vampire, that she's 1200 years old, that she revives only a handful of days later and completely resets herself. By the end of it all, you see the grown-up main character seeing Eri once again in the exact same place many, many years later, explaining this all to him, that she is a vampire. Once he exits the building, it explodes, which kind of cements the idea that the whole thing was a legitimate movie from start to finish, that it was more of a self-documentary of the main character's life while he was making two other movies. What's great about this is that you don't actually notice any of this, so you don't necessarily know what is real and what is fake. So it, it plays with your perspective very heavily and your interpretation of things, which gives this meaning of legacy and how you want to be remembered through the mediums or creations that you're going through. If you are a creative individual within the manga industry, your works is obviously going to be how people remember you. And when you see how the reception towards those works wasn't really well received, it obviously takes a lot out of the main character, drives him to the edge, he's upset, he's sad, even at one point wanting to take his own life. But then he gets reaffirmed that this is his creation, this is his identity, this is his aesthetic, this is his individuality. And then it starts again. Yet this time it's framed in a different way that works for viewers, that viewers love and appreciate and enjoy and it still has this chaoticness to it, but they understand it. They start to grow more to the fantasy elements woven between these very emotional and serious moments and it provides this uniqueness that isn't felt all too often. So undoubtedly you probably have a couple of questions. Did the mother pass away? Yes, I think that is true. Is Eri a vampire? No, I don't think she is. Did she pass away? Yes, I think that's true. Who is the main guy at the end? Is it his father or is it the main character? I think it is technically both. Once again, personal interpretation, right? You see the main character and Eri kind of go through this evolution, this growth where they grow older, where they kind of fall in love with each other and spend more time with each other and it's a, a self-documentary and then she starts to fall ill. When Eri passes away, and the vampire idea comes into play and when the quote-unquote main character meets Eri many many years later when he is older in the exact same place that is completely run down that is abandoned there is two things I gain from that one she did pass away two she's not actually a vampire and three that is how he remembered her the fantasy element that he brought into the story that he originally interpreted Eri as being a, a vampire because that's where she dragged him to when they first met. This random abandoned building complex with a projector to watch movies. They shared the same interest. So the beautiful and saddening part of it is that after her death, many many years later going back to that location and it's all run down, she's there. Because where else would she be? The best parts that he remembers of her, the most impactful, deeply changed his life. Not the bloom into their relationship or the journey that they went on with each other, but when they first met, when they watched movies together, when he thought of her as being a 1200 year old vampire. So obviously he leaves the building knowing that he can't stay there, that he can't stay within the past, that he can't be with this perfect final image of her that he remembers her by because she doesn't actually exist anymore and leaves the building and then it blows up and that's when you find out that that in itself is also a movie. So the whole thing was a legitimate movie movie. Again, I don't think there is a right or wrong answer. I think it is heavily interpretive. And a lot of this is going back to Fujimoto's own work, his own chaotic writing or fantasy writing that he mixes into his stories and people's reception towards it. He mentions a lot of creativity problems within the one shot as well. How difficult it is to find one's identity and how to latch onto it and expand upon it and to make it their own. And you've seen that effort and struggle that Fujimoto himself has gone through with his own works. Even look back, 
his prior one shot goes into great lengths to show the difficulties that he faced as a child creating manga and getting into the industry and how ridiculed he was for it because of the stories that he was writing because of the things that he wanted to do this is quite literally exactly what Eri is and what I believe it's what it's meant to portray a creative process and journey that Fujimoto himself went through that is highly interpretive telling honestly two to three different stories at the same time for a lot it may be very convoluted but if you just take it at your own pace you'll get a couple of different experiences from it similar to look back it was almost a, an identical thing for people that didn't really understand the manga industry or weren't necessarily creative that's perfectly fine you still got a very enjoyable one shot that was very personal but for people that are creative for for artists for for manga authors they could understand this more than any of us could because it was drawn it was conceptualized from personal experience and i believe eri is exactly that again just more introspective this time just more of a, a journey of growth because you have seen how far fujimoto has come you have seen how much learning and evolution he has gone through i for one can only hope that he sees the massive impact that he has made on the manga industry on authors on people on everyone around the globe all of his hard work his talent and his uniqueness fujimoto-esque has become a term to describe stories like his and it's because of him it's because of his individuality his style of storytelling something that he was originally ridiculed for he's carved out a path that not a lot of authors can take or could take i'm sure there has been an abundance of difficult hurdles on his path but i can only hope now that he sees the success that he sees the reception the love the appreciation that people have for his works not just his most mainstream popular one which is chainsaw man but for his soul telling and look where he is now one of the most well established and recognized authors within the industry at a very young age it goes without a doubt that i really enjoy fujimoto's work i enjoy his style i enjoy his creativity his uniqueness i enjoy how much influence he's had on his assistants and how much they respect him and how much of fujimoto's style has kind of drip fed into their own work of course i'm excited for chainsaw man part two i think everyone is but i think i'm more so excited for the future for more one shots for more storytelling experiences outside of the mainstream spotlight away from chainsaw man away from fire punch just these singular one shots have been incredible and i think it's safe to say for all of us we would love to see more of them within the future and i hope that he's able and wanting to potentially do that fujimoto has become a household name he has created a legacy he's left his mark on the industry and it's only just beginning it's going to be very exciting to see where he goes from here end time so with that welcome to the end of the video if you have made it this far thank you i appreciate you i would love to hear your thoughts on goodbye eri did you love it hate it appreciate it how do you feel about fujimoto himself his legacy the works that he's done and are you excited for the future let me know in the comment section below but with that i want to thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed leave a like and subscribe i would greatly appreciate it drink plenty of water and i will see you within the next one goodbye